Movie Review by Rob. Here, um, it is January sixth, four forty-five. I just got off of work, got a haircut, dyed my hair, and took a shower, so my eyes are bloodshot. So I figured, uh, with all these mundane things I'm doing today, why not jump right into a review of a movie a lot of people have not heard about or will not see in theaters because it's on a limited release. Uh, of course, I am talking about Revolutionary Road. Um, this is directed by Sam Mendes, same director as Road to Perdition and American Beauty, so you go into it kind of expecting a masterpiece. Um, it's also starring Leonardo DiCaprio and Kate Winslet. I think their, uh, their last... Uh, or their second film together since Titanic. Well, their la the newest film together since Titanic. Um, and basically, the plot to this is a uh, it's about a young couple living in Connecticut suburb during the mid 1950s, um, struggling to come to terms with their personal problems um, while trying to raise uh, children. Um, watching the the preview to this, like a lot of movies tell you about previews, a lot of my friends didn't want to see this movie because they said it looked downright depressing. And let's get right down to it. The movie is downright depressing. Um, it it kind of really hit home because it, it hit one of my fears. And it, this might be a lot of people's fears, but it's the, the realization of, you know, we're young. We have dreams. We have aspirations of what we want to be. Um, and then we get into the, the I guess, the never-ending cycle of paying bills, uh, going down to the norm of having children, paying for children. Um buying a house, and then working to support your family. Of course, in the mid-1950s, the, the woman stayed at home uh, to raise the children, but it put a lot of burden on the man to do, you know, this job and follow in his father's footsteps. So this film really touches on those fears. Uh, it opens very well by, uh, and it's another one of those I love these types of films, but uh, showing the beginning of a relationship because we one of the things that's always fascinated me is how do relationships begin um, you know referring to real life and all uh, it's always either through a friend of a friend or a chance occurrence or you know them for a very long time and you finally win them over which I think hardly ever happens or in most of my cases at least personally um, they come into your life one day and within days uh, you're with them so um, it was interesting to see how the relationship started, and then it jumped right into the present day of the film, which was in the 1950s, to show the couple basically at each other's throats. Um, the the content that this movie deals with, it's not in no no by no means uh, really extravagant. Um, it is kind of dull, kind of bland, but kind of realistic. You know, when what we, we had with um, American Beauty was you know these are simple problems, simple families everyday problems that are, you know, through the storytelling and the directing, uh, exemplified to relate to us and to create a story around it. And I always think that some of the best stories are the ones that are created um, on our own level. Not, I mean, fantasy's nice, uh, action's nice, but the ones that really hit home are the ones that we can relate to. Um, and being, you know, I'm only 23 years old and also I don't, I can't really relate to this film yet, but it definitely touched on some, some interesting fears of mine. Um, as far as performance wise, Kate Winslet, I always think she does amazing. And I, I, I'm always like astounded by how easily she hides her accent and gets into these American roles. Um, as well as Leonardo DiCaprio, like I'm not a huge fan of him, but I can't honestly say that in any films I've really been disappointed with. Gangs of New York, I thought he did a great job. The Beach um, by Danny Boyle, he did a great job. Um, even in Titanic, looking back, like Titanic wasn't one of my favorite films. I think James Cameron was, you know, a genius when it came to the actual storytelling and all, but it just the story kind of lacked. But it wasn't any fault in the actual, um, the actual acting. Although when I did see the preview to this, on a side note, <laughs> I was like, yeah, this is what would have happened if. Uh, if uh, Jack didn't die in the Titanic series, and uh, maybe Kate or Kate Winslet had lost all her money, uh, but um, yeah, I definitely I would say out of ten, I would give this to the the normal viewer uh, maybe like a five or a six. A lot of people I know that I associate with, or at least my age range, they would not be entertained by this movie. They would think it was dull. They would think it would drag on. Um, I mean, it is two hours long, uh, but at least with my my taste in films and my mindset 
recently and, and in general, this movie really hit home and I definitely recommend it. So I would say for most people, maybe a five, possibly six. For me, it was like an eight or a nine. Definitely I could rewatch this in a couple of months and really like relate to it again. Um, but on, like I said, I warn you, it is a depressing movie. Um, there's not a whole lot of happiness in it all the way through. So um, check it out. I believe it's probably going to be nominated for uh, for some awards this year. Till next time. Bye.